Hi fellow traders. It was a pretty tough day for us out in the market. I didn't really have the the volume or the volatility that we've had the last couple of weeks. Um, it was still some plays out there, but it was just choppy. Um, you had to have a lot of patience and all that good stuff. But it wasn't so much a boring day. Uh, try not to make it boring. But we're going to cover uh, the trades I took uh, here in a, in a minute. You know, but what I want to tell you today is to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Now, I know you say, yeah, what do you mean by that? You know, and I'm not talking about the Ice Cube lyrics from back in the day when he said, you better check yourself before you wreck yourself because I'm bad for your health. I come real stealth. Dropping bombs on your moms. Forget those car alarms. Doing foul crime. I'm the guy with your alpine. I'll, you know, I had to clean it up a little bit because this is a family show, but you know how it goes. <laughs> but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about doing what you need to do to keep yourself on the right path by consistently analyzing your effort. That way you can identify potential issues that you may be experiencing and begin to make the adjustments before they can really start affecting you negatively. You know, so what's one of the, the main things we need to check? Now, it's going to be our attitude. That's one of the main things that we need to check is our attitude you know and our attitude to put it simply is our belief in something that gives us our frame of mind and so therefore if you have a positive belief deep down in your core deep down inside you just you you just have that positive belief and it just comes out of you your frame of mind is going to reflect this and you're going to be positive and that your actions, regardless to negative stimuli or whatever, it's going to be positive. And anybody that's accomplished great things, they've done so with the right attitude. Now, maybe, you know, Steve Jobs may not be the best example of that. You know, because he kind of had a different attitude, but to him, that was positive. So from us looking from the outside in, we might have thought it was a bad attitude or an elitist attitude or whatever but for him that was positive and that was fueling the right frame of mind that he needed to accomplish what he did but <clears throat> what I do know 100% for fact is that a bad attitude is going to lead you to failure 100% of the time and I'm not talking about you know these little failures where you try to shoot a bass the basketball is then going to hold or you know you try to you hit a golf shot and it goes off into the woods into the wall I'm not talking about those little failures I'm talking about complete knockdown drag out failure the kind that beats you up and knocks you down to where you can't get up and the reason why you can't get up is because the, that negative attitude wins out it doesn't allow you to land on your back. It allows you to land face down with your face in the dirt. And you start, you just give up. And that's when you fail. That's the knockdown drag out fail. That's when the attitude really beats you down. So, you know, you, you have to make sure that you stay away from that. There are people that can create the bad attitude. Now, I know you guys have been through this. Mo most of you, if not all of you, have been through this scenario. You know, you find trading for the first time and you're excited about it and you think you know, this is the answer to your prayers. It, it'll allow you to have financial freedom and allow you to spend more time with your family, have the things you want to do, do the things you want to do. And the first person you tell 
you know, starts putting these negative thoughts into your head. Tomorrow, are you kidding me? You must be out your mind. You know, this, that, and the other thing. And then that negativity starts creeping into your head. Somebody else has put it there. And then you start going online and you start looking up this and that. And you start seeing all of these people posting that, you know, day trading is a scam or swing trading is a scam or um, options are a scam. You know, it just goes on and on and on. And then it just keeps go coming. And then all of a sudden, even if you do start, you're going to start with this apprehension and this negativity that's going to keep you from realizing your potential. So that's something is, is very important that you do have a winning attitude. You know, and like I said, anybody that has accomplished great things, they had to have the right attitude that that fueled. It. So what you got to do, you got to check yourself every day. Make sure you're not having a meltdown. If you are, then identify what it is and go and fix it. Make sure it's right. You know, check yourself. Ask, is, is this the right attitude for this situation? Am I approaching this the right way? You know, do I have doubt? Is If there's doubt, then I need to do what I what I need to do to eliminate this doubt. You know, think about, you know, for me, sometimes I get jacked up in the morning. And I listen to uh, some music. You know, that's why professional athletes like to listen to music. It, it gets their mind right. It gets them, them psyched up. So you, they're putting themselves in um, an empowering state before before they go out and conquer or go out in a, an attempt to do this, this task or attempt the game or, or whatever. So it's an empowering feeling. The positive attitude, it puts you in the right frame of mind. And you know in trading, losses are a part of the game. We're going to lo we're gonna take losses. We're going to jump into trades. Trades aren't going to work and do what we want them to do. But if we have that negative attitude, that negative mindset, and things start, doubt starts creeping in about whether we can really do this, and then you start blaming me for making you believe, and I, I should have shared, I, I've got a cool email. I, I remember to share it tomorrow because I don't want to make this any longer than it is. But to... to you know, sum it up. This guy, back in July, he and the, he and his friend, um, golfing buddy joined or started trading at the same time. They were watching videos together and all this. He chose to come with me. His other buddy went and paid, you know, five or six times more, like twenty eight, twenty nine hundred dollars, and joined this other room. So as we were going through it, you know, of course I teach. You know, you have to build that foundation. You start small. You build up your confidence. You build up that positive mentality. You start believing in yourself. And you scale from there. Um, so almost immediately, this guy starts sending him messages like, I made this today. I made that today. You know, we did. We made all this in this room. And we made all that. So he sends me an ugly email. And you know, calls me this, that, and the other thing and says, I don't know what I'm doing. And, you know, he's, he's hate that he wasted his money. And so he went and joined this other room, spent um, 25, 26 out, however much it was, 28, 2900. I know it was 20 something. And, you know, go over there and, it, it's not long before he finds out that his friend has been lying to him about him making profits. And he ended up losing all of his money, his whole account, in a matter of three weeks. Whereas he was with me for three months, um, had not drawn down his account, 
And then he realized all of the fundamentals, everything I was teaching him was what he needed. And so he sent me this email apologizing and saying, I'm sorry, I was ugly. You know, I let all these negative things creep in. And, you know, this kind of got me thinking about this, you know, how our negativity and our attitude really messes us up. And today you'll see what the trades when we go over it here in a second is, is really what made me start thinking about having to check ourselves. And making sure that we make sure that we are doing the right things and that we're responding in the right way. All right, so um, BITA was my first trade today. Um, it it made a nice move at the open. I mean, real nice move at the open. Nice run up. Then we started selling off, and so. You know, I, I missed the opening range trade. Uh, what, I, what I was waiting to do, I, I decided that I was going to do this the right way. I let the first candle print, and I was going to wait for this candle to, to close. And then I was going to get in looking for the move back up to test red to green. This was the window I was looking to trade in. Well... The second candle printed, we pull back a little bit, and this thing rocketed all the way up and took up my whole trading range. Because this was going to be my, my target. The 200 was my final target. You know, I was looking at getting in, um, this being my first target, depending on where we got in here. This was going to be my final target. I knew that we were going to get up here and reject the 200 well we made the move and I really didn't like the spread you know the spread it, in pre-market the spread was pretty good and then all of a sudden the spread got crazy right here when we started you know selling off and so I it kind I kind of stayed out of it and then I waited and waited and now the spread got close enough for me to be able to deal with this thing so i get in on this rejection now we're after 11 o'clock so i'm not so much concerned about the opening range low here uh, normally after 11 we can kind of work our way through this um, you still want to respect it but i get it was enough room here for me to give it a chance so i i got in um as soon as i got in we went all the way back up and tested this and here's the choppiness here's where it really tests your patience because you could have easily if i was watching my pnl i would have easily just stopped out up here you know but i didn't i gave it time and let it work and ended up catching my first target down here and we kind of held so we bounced. I wasn't gonna take it long, um, and, and I was kind, you know, I was I was teasing in the room, but I was dead serious. It was so slow. I started watching the big short, and I think that influenced me because I was not gonna take any long trades today. I was determined to short everything there was, and I was determined to find weakness and stuff. But I got out, traded here. I had my stop. At break even and ended up with this huge slippage now why did we get 15 cent slippage look at what happened to the volume the volume died we were trading below 50,000 shares now I have a rule where I do not trade stocks that's trading below 50,000 shares on a five minute candle well when I got in it wasn't doing that now it's doing that so, do you think I stayed out of this? Absolutely not. I'm a glutton for punishment. So, I got in. Um, I let this candle reject. Waited for this candle to close. Got in. Felt like we were getting a good rejection here. And guess what? Nice little fake out. We pulled all the way back. I was get, This was my stop. I was going to stop out here. 
if this candle confirmed the claim of the VWAP here. It didn't. We had a big sell-off, closed back below here. But then this level held. And I'm like, oh, you know why? So still holding, still going to use this level here. I was just being patient. As long as this trade was not claiming the VWAP, there was still a chance for this thing to fade. And that's what I was, you know, trading this on. I stopped choking out my trades with tight stops. Um, I would get in with small enough size to allow this trade to work and test the key technical levels. And as long as we stayed below this, I, I was in I was in play. So I got in. We just could not get anywhere. So I ended up just taking half off, you know, and locking in some more profit here. And then, you know, when we got down to back down to this level, I took some more off. No, I shorted again. I'm sorry. I took it off here. I just took it all off. And then I said, if we did lose this, I was going to reshort it. And that's what I did. I reshorted it here, took some off, and I had to leave to go pick my son up at 3 o'clock. So I just put a profit stop in just above the 20, I mean the 9 here. So if we, were going, if we recovered the 9, it was going to stop me out, and that's what it did. It went ahead and took me out. But, you know, you can see all, all through this, you know, it was a lot of work. I was in, you know, smaller size. I could have traded 500 shares on this, you know, but, well, I actually did trade 500 this last time. But I could have traded it here, you know, but I didn't. I just didn't like the choppiness. And I probably would have been stopped out had I traded big, but I kept my size small enough to be able to withstand these pullbacks. And was able to squeeze some profit out of it. I'm not perfect trading. But I didn't let the fact that the stock was choppy and irritating, you know, put me in a bad mood. You know, I, I stayed light, light-minded, light-hearted, um, even threw out a nice little poll for you guys in chat. I know y'all got a kick out of that. But I appreciate your honesty. And... You know, just try to, to to lighten the spirit. And that's that's what you have to do. Trust and believe in what you know. Trust and believe in your fundamentals. For me, I'm a technical trader. The, the technicals are my fundamentals. So I believe 100% in them. I know sometimes I may have to adjust because the algorithms are using something different. But that's the beautiful part of being an independent day trader. I can make those adjustments relatively quickly. So that was it on BITA. Um, did okay with it. Now, ATVI was a complete mistake. Um, this was not intentional, even though it looks that like it could be. It looks like it could be me getting in under the 200. But if you know how I trade, this 9 is way too close. The 20, I'm not going to short into all of this. But this was when I was having trouble trying to log back in my platform. I would log in and I would have no data. And I would log in again. I log out, log back in, have no data. And somehow I got in and got out and then got back in. So I was sitting there talking before I realized I was in a... I was in this trade, but it was working. So I just gave it a chance to lose VWAP. And if it wouldn't lose it, I, I would go ahead and take it off. And I just held it through all of this. You see, this is just choppiness. This is not the kind of price action that you want to be trading in. So the only reason I was in this was this. it was an, an accident because, you know, my smarts, behind even though i couldn't see it i was just hitting buttons and you know i hit the wrong hotkey 
is pretty much what happened. And it got me in. And I tried to work it. Like I said, I didn't get upset. Didn't get mad. And I, I mean, the day really could have started out frustrating. Because if you were using SureTrader like I am, you know, we couldn't even put orders out at the open. You know, maybe if there was a big trade that I was trying to jump in at the open and I couldn't get my order filled, then I probably would have been upset and it probably would have ruined my day. But thankfully, there were no trades I was trying to get in. And then when I got ready to take a trade, you know, we were set. But, you know, here I just got a little frustrated and started hitting buttons. And I couldn't see my chart. I couldn't see anything. There was no data coming through. But evidently, it was taking my orders. <coughs> and they saw it. Um, when I logged back in and chat, you saw, you know I had taken trades. Everybody saw me had, that I had taken trades. And there was no data on the chart, no data of any trade I'd taken at all. And it wasn't responding. So evidently, I just hit buttons and and did it. But it's, it's my fault. I can't blame anybody else but me. But ended up, uh, you know, making a couple of dollars on this. Not Nothing to, to write home about. But um, I was just proud of the way. I didn't panic out. I didn't lose my cool. I just waited. Waited to see if this was going to work out. If it didn't, go ahead and take it off. You know, and move on. On the one trade that I did want to get, I call this, uh, if you were in chat after the close, you know, I, I um, alerted this, you know, sh this short on this pop due to the earnings. It popped all the way up. You're going to get a short at least half the way back, if not halfway, all the way. And this one gave you half, gave you another half, another piece. And then eventually, you know, pull down. You don't have to get out your position until like 8 o'clock. I mean, not 8 o'clock, 6 o'clock now with SureTrader. So this was a, a beautiful trade if you're in SureTrader. You still had a chance to get out of it. But this is what I was talking about in chat. You know, that I was watching the, the earnings pop. These things pop. And you watch it. And when it starts to set up on a pullback, you jump on it and and you fade it back. But we'll, you know, we cover this. We will be covering these trades in the class. So these are a little bit more riskier, just like the pre-market trading. You know, we cover, we're going to cover that in the class as well. So, you know, and this will be covered in the class too. It's, it's a lot better when you understand and you know what you're doing. You know, you have a better chance of success and know what you're looking for. And it, this was a beautiful move, you know, aftermarket that you could just really, really, really pad your account with. All right, so that was my day. Um, if you want to see all of this live, come join us. And it's just, I made it as simple as possible. One subscription price, you get access to the class, to the weekly web education webinar, both classes, swing trading and day trading. Um, I'm here to talk to you. I'm keeping this small so that I can talk to everybody that need that wants to talk. You know, you'll never get an email from anybody else other than me. And you'll never get, you'll never talk to anybody else other than me. I think that's um, very important. So check it out. Um, head over to my website. You can check it out. You can't find a better deal anywhere. You know, one payment, one subscription, and you got everything. You won't hear me hitting you up to subscribe to this or buy this or buy that. 
All right, so that's going to do it for me today. Uh, you guys take it easy. Have a great evening. And we'll get back at it tomorrow and see uh, what we can do.